According to Meepo, life is all about who you know and what you can find. In his case, who you know is some gambler friends, and what he can find is himself often in debt. But nevertheless, this furry, grinning con man has solidified himself as one of Artifact's most unique and annoying. I ain't just a pretty face. I got the power to back it up. Hello everybody, on this episode of our Card Spotlight series we will be taking a look at Meepo, the Geomancer. His card is certainly discussed the most in Artifact and he has a very unique but not very well known backstory. Let's get into it. Meepo made a living telling stories about the Rift Shadow Ruins and guiding travelers through its wastes. Those who wish to know the ruins deepest secrets must tip Meepo generously and keep their mouths shut about anything they see. Meepo, the oddball that he is, also enjoys gambling at the White Spire, and has a fondness for redheads, which he declared himself to Lena, Windranger, and Enchantress. Recently though, Meepo hit a cold streak and lost a lot of money. He decided to borrow some from Mama Eeb and give one of his clones, Meepo 3, as collateral. Later, he and the rest of the Meepo squad felt bad for sacrificing Meepo 3, so they instead took a loan from the Jasper Circle to get Meepo 3 back. However, now they were indebted to the Circle. They started doing odd jobs for the Ravenhooks and skimmed some off the top to pay back the Circle. The Ravenhooks found out that they were being robbed and cut Meepo off from doing jobs for them. I don't know what the other Ravenhooks have been saying about me, but at least 20% of it isn't all true. Now, he is back to where he was before and still needs to pay back the Jasper Circle what they are due. In the confusion, Meepo 3 wanders off and finds a wanted poster of their old and dear friend, Maresca, the Dark Willow. Maresca's father, Lord Sunbreeze, put a huge bounty on his daughter, which would help Meepo pay off his debt as well as rescue his friend. There was one problem, however. He knew he couldn't get to her before the infamous bounty hunter, Gondar. Oh, Meepo. Don't you get tired of me killing you? Ganda, buddy, pal! You don't want to kill me. Of course someone wants you dead. Lord Sunbreeze always pays well. He decided that once Gondar captures Maresca, the Meeple Squad will free her from his grasp. This way, Maresca will owe them and stop the Jasper Circle from killing them for their debt. Additionally, the Meepo Squad will still be able to redeem the bounty on Maresca's head. According to Meepo, It's a perfect plan! What could go wrong? Meepo in Artifact is a rare blue hero with 4 attack and 5 health. Certainly weak, but for a mobility utility hero it is forgiven. Now on the other hand, it does share the highest attack stat with Outworld Devourer between all the blue heroes. So a decent compromise in stats overall. Meepo has two abilities, but we have to mention his signature first. A 4 mana spell called Divided We Stand that summons a Meepo. These are exact clones of Meepo separated only by their art. The clones are hero themselves, so they go to the fountain when they die, they allow you to play cards of the same color, equip items on them, and give 5 gold each when they die. Remember however that Meepos do not share items. Combined with Ogre Magi's multicast, 8 heroes in a field is a strong possibility, which is as ridiculous as it is appropriate for a hero like Meepo. This effect is extremely faithful to its Dota 2 version. In Dota, Divided We Stand summons an imperfect, semi-autonomous duplicate of Meepo that can gain gold and experience at the same time. However, unlike Artifact, the Meepo clones cannot wield any items except for the boots that Meepo Prime wears. Let's go back to Meepo's abilities, the first being an active ability called Poof. Poof allows you to move Meepo to an allied Meepo lane and deal 2 damage to the enemy neighbors on a 2 turn cooldown. Mobility is very powerful when you have multiple Meepo, however this wording allows you to use the ability to move the Meepo into the same lane to deal damage to the enemy neighbors. If there is only one possible location Meepo can come back when triggering Poof on itself, it deals damage to the neighbors that it had previously. If there are multiple spots that Meepo can be placed in, then it gets placed in a random spot and will deal damage to those new neighbors. Somewhat similarly, in Dota 2, Poof allows Meepo to teleport to another Meepo or itself, dealing damage in both the departure and arrival locations. Alone, this ability and signature is incredibly powerful, so to balance things out, Meepo gets a second ability in the form of a continuous effect called United We Fall. This gives Meepo a sort of soulbound effect. If one Meepo dies, all other allied Meepos in every lane also die. This effect is a considerable downside, so much so that Meepo is considered to be one of the weakest heroes in the game. In drafts it's especially true, but there are situations where Meepo can be viable and constructed. And if utilized correctly, Meepo can actually be devastating for your opponent to deal with because Divided We Stand creates a snowball effect like none other in the game. A deck needs to help Meepo avoid damage and increase his sustainability in order to utilize him properly. Blue cards like Ventriloquy and Compel can direct arrows away, and red heroes can protect Meepo by being beefy and granting access to cards like Berserker's Call and Duel. Red also gives us Time of Triumph, which is the dream combo, mitigating our Meepo from constantly dying and feeding gold. Green also has quite a lot of buff cards like Ramusk Blessing, Emissary of the Quorum, and even Divine Purpose. In conclusion, Meepo works best when he's paired up with either green or red. 
Here is a Meepo-centric blue-red decklist that should fill all of your Meepo wants and needs. This decklist is by Swellzonk, and he has been working on this deck for a while now. He wrote a guide on Reddit with gameplay that we will have a link in the description below, because he definitely knows his deck and Meepo more than we do. To give a simple breakdown of the deck, it is a red-blue control core with a combo finish. While this deck does have Incarnation of Selimane, the combo is primarily enabled by Meepo's Poof. While you have your infinite mana turn in one lane, you buff your Meepos to a crazy number, and then you can blink as many of them as you want and have the rest follow with Poof. Remember that Poof will be on cooldown for Meepos that were summoned in the infinite mana turn, so you will need to use Blink Dagger on these and have Meepos that have been around for a while use Poof. The Omex Arena is a powerful card in draft since it draws cards for hero death on both sides. Meepo turns the Omex Arena into a ridiculous draw engine. While the card ratio might seem a bit off considering there are only two blue heroes but yet more blue cards than red, this is because eventually with Divided We Stand you will have either the same or more blue heroes than red in total. In a similar fashion, you don't have to worry about casting blue cards in the early game if you can get your meepos to alternate between the board and the fountain. This way, you can send a meepo alone into a lane to cast Annihilate without worrying about other meepo dying in a different lane. On his own, Meepo is underwhelming, but in multiple, eh, still a bit underwhelming. But with some buffs, perseverance, and deck building, he can be a fun, crazy hero to pilot. We hope this video makes you want to give Meepo another try. The meta has become a bit stale, so try spicing up your games with this deck for the time being. Let us know in the comments what your Meepo builds are. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.